The reason that I wanted to work on the Western Bluebirds is that they have a really fascinating social structure. But what I was interested in is looking at cooperation in situations that only rarely occur and that we as observers in the field might never see. So for example, when a male is caught by a predator. In one of the video clips that I have, you can see one of my field assistants holding the male and his female mate is swooping right over the head of the field assistant, even though the bluebirds look pretty small and harmless. When they swoop right over your head, it can be kind of startling, which I think is the point of the behavior. But we do also see other birds, so not the female mate, come in and respond in a similar way. And I'm looking at whether those are relatives or non-relatives and why they might be responding to this signal of distress. Okay, they're really cute. Are you ready? <laughs> they're kind of sleeping right now. Okay, so this is a 14-day-old bluebird nestling. And you can see we've just put on all of the color bands. And all the nestlings in a given nest will have the same combination on this leg and then a, an identifying band on the other leg. And these birds are a little bit underdeveloped because the weather's been really cold and rainy, so they haven't had as much food as they could have. And we also take a blood sample so we can figure out if maybe one of them had a different father than the other chicks in the nest. And their weight on this day, on day 14, is actually correlated with their lifetime reproductive success. So ones that are big now are probably going to do well for the rest of their life. So it's an important time. Yeah, so you do like, you do 10 wraps and then you coat it in nail polish. So I, have to, I had to buy a whole bunch of this nail polish. <laughs> it actually smells pretty bad. So what I'm doing here is making an antenna that will detect the pit tags that we put on the bluebird's leg bands. And so the idea is that a complete antenna will go around um, the hole of a nest box. So every time a bird flies into the nest hole, it'll basically be going through the antenna. And so one thing I'm interested in is how um, bluebirds know that they're related to each other, right? And one way that they could potentially figure that out is by visiting the box of a relative um, when the nestlings are close to fletching, and maybe then they would learn to recognize those nestlings. Um, but that's completely a guess at this point. Um, I'm just interested in putting these up there and seeing if they do even visit each other's boxes at all. We should actually not uh, disturb it because the female is in there. Okay, then. If you want to get a really quick shot, you can do that. Bluebirds, I'm thinking, and this is my hypothesis, that it's going to be based on relatedness. So only relatives will be committing these high cost acts. So coming in and trying to help someone in a, in a very difficult situation. Whereas in humans, we often see non-relatives do that. I mean, I definitely got interested in the questions that I'm studying now just because you know, I thought they were fascinating. It wasn't because I thought they would necessarily have any impact on society or anything like that. But it sort of developed to this place I am now where I think it really is applicable to studying cooperation in humans. You can often run into this type of thing where your work turns out to have implications that you never dreamed that it would when you first started on that path. So I think that's a reason that it's so important that scientists be allowed to pursue questions that they're interested in for their own sake.